Let's create a cinematic logo animation in Blender. To get started, first we need our logo. Here I have this one, a black logo in a white background. Colors are not that important, but since we are going to convert this PNG image to SVG format, I found this type of logo to give the best results when converting. If you are going to model your own logo, then you don't need to worry about any of these. Simply skip to the next chapter. So all you have to do is convert this to SVG format using any of your preferred methods. There are plenty of free online file converting sites that let you do that. Just upload your logo to it and then download the converted SVG file. Once that's done, you will get something like this. Now we need to import this to our Blender project. Before that, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and make sure you have this SVG import add-on enabled. If not, take this box. Go to File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphics and find your logo and import it. This will import our logo as curve objects. Since our logo had few separated pieces, it imported all of them as separated curves. If you are not seeing anything, check your SVG file. I found some of the converting methods not working when importing to Blender. Now you can see they are very small and they have this black color material attached to them. I want all of these as separate pieces later. But right now, I select all of them and hit Ctrl J to join them into one. Scale them up and position in the middle and set the origin to 3D cursor. I delete our material as well. Hit R X 90 to rotate it 90 degrees to face forward. Now let's turn this to a 3D logo. Select our logo and in curve settings under geometry we have this extrude option. Since we need very small values hold your shift key and add a small amount of extrusion. When I go to the wireframe you can see this topology mess. This is what we get if we turn this to a mesh. Because of that, converting this to a mesh and then adding some bevel is not going to be any easy. So we have to use this bevel option in the curve settings to add some bevel to the logo. It is not the best option, but I think we can make it work. So let's add a very small value. You can see it adds bevel, but also scales up our pieces. Let's try tweaking it more. Here I like the result of 0 0.0008. If you model your logo, you are not going to face any of these issues. So unless you want a quick and easy method, I recommend you to model your logo rather than using this method. However, we got our logo. Let's go ahead and create a material. I call it silver. Go to the shading workspace. Set the metallic slider to 1. You can change the roughness to your liking. But this is very uniform, right? Let's create more variation in this. I add an image texture and open up this scratches overlay image. You can find these type of textures from textures.com or any other preferred texture libraries. You can see it mapped weirdly. We can fix that by hitting Ctrl T. Get these two nodes and hit Ctrl X to remove the mapping node. We don't need that. Change the texture coordinates from UV to object. Since we scaled up our object a lot, we need to change the scale of the image a lot as well. You can use the mapping node we deleted before, but here I use a vector map node and set it to scale. Change its value to get something like this. We got a decent mapping of the logo, but it is stretched on the sides. We can fix that by changing the projection type to something like box. You can see it fixed the issue. If you see any harsh seams in the texture, then add some blending from here. And another important thing is, 
since I am not using any color data from this image, I can change the color space to linear or non color. This will fix a lot of issues, especially when you use these textures for normals, roughness, and like that. I plug this to roughness. Immediately, it looks way better than previous uniform roughness. Using a color ramp node, you can adjust these roughness values. To add more variations, I add a noise texture. Plug it to object coordinates. Tweak its values and use a color ramp to adjust it even more. Since color ramp is a node I use often, I have it on my favorite list. You can find the color ramp node here in the converter color ramp. Using a mix RGB node, I mix these two together. Now, depending on your liking, you can adjust these even more. Let's plug this to our color. Using math nodes, you can adjust that as well. Reason I'm using math nodes is right now I'm looking for a gray colored logo. If you want some color, you can use color nodes to add some colors to your logo. But I am looking for a silver looking material. I am not worried about adding color. I'll add more variation using a vector bump node. Plug this to the height socket and change the strength and distance values to get a little bump in the texture. Plug the output to the normal socket. Check the invert button to reverse the bump direction. You can spend a lot more time adjusting these values to your liking, but let me move on to the next steps. Now we need to animate this logo. Since I like to animate each of these pieces individually, I want them as separated objects. For that, I will convert this to mesh and then separate them. Before that, just in case, I will keep a copy of the original curve object. Duplicate our logo and disable the original from both viewport and render view. Select the second one, right click and convert to mesh. Now I can go to edit mode, hit M and use merge by distance option. This should make separating these pieces easy by joining any overlapping verses. But here it gave me weird results. Let's undo it. We have a method but that will be a bit annoying if you have a logo with thousands of pieces. So I go to face selection mode and hit L to select these pieces. Then hit T to separate them into new objects. Here I have to do this for all the other pieces. Once you separated all of the pieces, add an empty object. Call it logo controller and parent all of your pieces to that empty. That way we can control all of them at once. It's time to add the camera. Select our scene collection. This will make it active collection. So new object will add to it. Add a camera, Alt R to clear its rotation. Then. Rotate it 90 degrees on X and position it like this. I divide my window into three and in the top left one, I turn off overlays, gizmos and go to camera view. This way I can always keep an eye on the camera view while animating stuff from the other 3D view. I drag the camera back even more. Or you could change the focal length to something like 24mm, which is what I did in my previous animation. In the camera settings, under viewport display, change this value to 1. This way, everything outside of my camera view will be black. To start animating, first I will set the animation frame length. This is a 6 second animation, so I set the start and end frames to 24 and 168. Reason for starting at 24 is, if you have simulation in your project, it is always a great practice to start a few frames back so that your simulation has time to settle in rather than everything starting from frame 1. 
Also, it helps with some glitches when you have motion blur turned on. I scale my logo down a bit using logo controller. Push it back and add a keyframe for its location. Change this to graph editor and go to 100th frame and bring the controller or our empty forward and add another keyframe. Since we are only animating the Y location, I delete X and Z graphs from here. Then select our Y graph and change it to something like this, so that it will start a bit slowly. Catch some speed and then slowly settle into the last position. Then I start creating animations for each piece of the logo. I want them to come from different directions and settle in around the 120th frame. This way, it will nicely blend with our MT's animation. There's nothing really new about this animation. I just quickly keyed some keyframe for their location and rotation. Change their timing a bit by moving the keyframes and adjusting the curves. Spend some time polishing your animation because this is a very important part of the process. Although I did this in a few minutes, make sure to spend more time adjusting the timing, speed, rotation, and everything to make your animation look epic. I ended up with something like this, which is far from a good animation, but for this tutorial, I say it's fine. Let's start our lighting process. Go to render view. We are currently in Cycles, so let's switch to EV. Using Cycles for this type of animation is unnecessary. Set the world color to black. We don't need any ambient lighting. Add an area light, place it above the logo. Make it a rectangular shape and increase the strength. Angle a bit like this. We can get a small rim light from this. You can enable or disable contact shadows depending on the look it gives you. Here I set the custom distance to something like 3.5 so it only affects our logo. Big part of our lighting is volumetric stuff. So before moving forward, we need to set that one up. Add a cube and scale it up like this. Apply the scale and change this to shader editor. Let's rename this to volume. Create a material and delete the principal shader. We don't need any surface shaders, just the volume. Add principal volume node and plug it to volume output. You probably won't see anything because of the high density. So I set it to something like 0 0.005. To get the best out of volumetric lighting, let's measure the distance from the camera to here. This is the area I want to see my volumetric effects. Anything beyond that is unnecessary. It says 11. So here in the render settings under volumetric, enable the volumetric shadows and set the end value to 11 or 12. This way we can get the best of our volumetric lighting. Now let's add a spotlight and position it behind the logo to face forward. Set the strength to a high value like 2000 watt. This will give us a rim light and more importantly, some volumetric shadows. I align the light with this wolf's eye. Set the radius to zero to get more sharp volumetric shadows. Tweak these values to get better results. After that, I duplicate my spotlight a few times and place them like this. So they will light the pieces when they are on their way to assemble. I increase their blend values to make the spotlight shape blend with the rest of the scene. Here if you don't like the logo shading, you can tweak it. I increase the cone shape of the main spotlight to cover the whole logo. So that way we can get a better rim light around the whole logo. Let's improve our volume even more by using a noise texture to its density. 
I use a color ramp to increase the contrast and animate the W value to add some movement to the noise. Then multiply it with a math node and plug it to density. This way we can have a non-uniform spread in our volume. Here I move back the spotlight in the last second of the animation. Also, I animate all the light strength to slowly come to its full strength. This way at the start it will be pitch black and then you will see lights start to get its full strength. Let's add some depth of field to our camera. Here in the camera settings, I enable the depth of field and select our controller to be the focus object. Set the f-stop to something like 1.4. Here I can change this blades value to get different bokeh shapes. 0 for circle, 3 for triangle, then square, pentagon, like that. If you want an anamorphic lens shape, then Set this back to 0 and change the ratio to 2. Here in the render settings, I check these two options. Disable ambient occlusion. Sometimes it gives weird results when you have very shallow focus. Enable motion blur. You can change the volumetric tile size to lower size to get better results. But in this case, I keep it at 8 pixels. There's no noticeable difference between the two resolutions. You can enable this as well and in the view layer settings, enable volume light pass and bloom pass. You can uncheck these. Now we are ready to do our render. Pick a good frame and go to render workspace and hit F12 to render. Let's go to compositing workspace to do some compositing. Control space to maximize the window. Control shift click to get a viewer node and hit V to scale down the preview. If you want to scale up, use Alt V. First, I take volume pass and use RGB curves to increase the contrast a bit. Since our render is a very dark scene, we have to change this bottom corner of the curve to affect the render. Use an exposure node and increase its exposure. Then I add a mix RGB node and add our volume to the render. Also, let's take our bloom pass and do a similar thing. Use an exposure node and increase it a bit and add it to the render. I want to add more glow to the render. Let's use filter glare node. Set it to fog glow. Quality to high and increase the size. I duplicate the add node. Set the mix to 1 so that we only get the glow. After that, add it to render. Change this factor to control the glow amount. Now I use another RGB curves node and do an overall color gray. I change the curve to add some blue tint to the render. Then add a lens distortion and a bit of dispersion. Check this fit box to fit the image back to its original render size. Actually in this render you can't really see the effect of the dispersion. But in my other render I had these small particles in the air which look like this after adding the dispersion. I'll show you how to add those later. To add some vignette to the render I use an ellipse mask and set its scale to roughly fit the render. Then use a blur node. Set it to fast Gaussian and check relative and add some blur to the mass. Now using mix RGB node, I multiply it with our render to add some vignette. You can control the vignette amount by changing the factor. Also, if you want to add some letterbox to your render, you can do it in the same way. This time using a box mask. Don't need to blur it. Personally, I like to do this in my video editing application. That way, I can decide later whether I want the letterbox or not. Once you finish the compositing, make sure to plug the final node to composite node. Otherwise, you might end up seeing a complete black render. 
So let's see a before and after. Switch to a new render slot. Render the frame. Now using the J key, I can switch between the slots. Here is before compositing and here is after. Here is my previous attempt to do the animation. I spent a little more time in the animation process. And more importantly, I have these particles in the scene. These particles will add some depth to our scene by eliminating the negative space. It is very simple to set up. Add a cube and create a particle system. Set it to 200 particles. That number probably depends on your scene. Set the emit source to volume. Distribution to render. Set the velocity to low number along with this randomized value. This will give the particles a slow movement. Set the render type to object and add a sphere into the scene. Select it as the object. Randomize its scale. For the sphere material, I use a Fresnel node with a color ramp to the alpha. Set the metallic to 1 and roughness to 0.4. This will make it barely visible but enough to contribute to the scene. Also, make sure in the render settings to set the blend mode to alpha blend and untick these two options show back face and back face color. You can grab these project files along with the others from my Patreon page. So that's it. That's how we create our logo animation in Blender. With a bit of sound designing, you can have your final logo animation. So just like before, you can grab all the project files from my Patreon page. These videos are possible thanks to these awesome people. So I hope you learned something cool, something useful, I mean, that's what we like to do. We not only create stuff, we let you create with us. Hit the like button, comment your thoughts below and don't forget to subscribe to LFX Learn so you won't miss out when the next video drops. If you like to create procedural lightning effects from scratch, check this video out. Oh, you can learn to create this awesome suit up effect from this video. See you there.